Hey guys, it's Lena Blake from Redefined Horizons, and this is the second video in part one of our Spring 2020 Land Title Webinar Series. And in this video, we're going to try and answer the question, the difference between ownership based on paper title and ownership based on possession. I'm trying to keep these videos short, 15 to 10 minutes. So we'll see if we can answer that question in, this, in that period of time. So throughout history, there's been basically two two systems of ownership uh, in the law. And one is ownership that's based on possession of the property, and then another is based on usually some kind of paper title. Okay. And so let me try and explain the, uh, explain the difference. We talked about personal property in the last video. So in most places around the world, including the United States, we have this expression you may have heard, which is possession is nine-tenths of the law. What that means is that for most types of property, the person in possession of the property is presumed to be the owner. And if somebody else wants to claim that that property is theirs, in other words, if they claim that person stole their property, they have the burden of proof. Okay? And that was true under the Roman system and even going back all the way to ba ancient Babylon, uh, something called the... Humurabi Code, an early an early constitution in essence, had rules about the possession of property and, and how you settle disputes around property. And there's this presumption that the person in possession of property is the owner. So let's go back to our coffee mug and I'll demonstrate that. Okay, this is personal property. When we say possession is nine-tenths of the law, this is what we mean. This is my partner's coffee cup, Danny's coffee cup. So if he comes into the room and I'm using his coffee cup, and he says, hey, that's mine. That's my coffee cup. Give it back. And I say, no, it's not. It's my coffee cup. It's not yours. Okay, now we have a dispute, ownership dispute over a piece of personal property. So let's say that Danny calls the Oakdale police. We're here in the city of Oakdale. This is Landon stealing my property. So Oakdale police are going to come out, and they're going to walk in, and they're going to say, what's going on here, gentlemen? And I'm going to say, hey, this is my coffee mug. I don't know what Danny's talking about. And Danny's going to say, no, it's not. It's mine. He took it. And here's what Oakdale PD is going to say in most cases. They're going to tell Danny, Danny, Landon's in possession. If you want that coffee cup, you got to go to court. Okay, That's what we mean when we say possession is nine-tenths of the law. Okay? And that's reasonable if you think about the consequences of how that actually works in the real world. First of all, it gives you a, a, a strong incentive to keep your, hands on, keep your hands on your own personal property, keep it secure. And secondly, you know, it prevents the problems we have if everybody could run around and create all kinds of legal controversy and, and conflict just by making uh, assertions about ownership of personal property. So that's the rule in, in most modern Western civilizations. Possession is nine-tenths of the law when it comes to personal property. Okay, so that is a ownership system based primarily on possession. In other words... Even if Danny has a, a piece of paper, let's say this was a gift from his mom, and he's got a, let's say he's got a letter from his mom where she talks about uh, how she, you know, went, went shop, thrift shopping in, in Sonora and went to all the little shops on Main Street and found him this coffee cup and she hopes he enjoys it, right? And he shows the policeman the letter. If I've got possession, Danny's, he's still up a creek without a paddle. So paper title to this personal property really doesn't matter in most cases. So that's a system based on ownership system based on possession. Okay. A paper title system is one where you need legally recognized paper title to prove your ownership. Okay. And there's two things that we do that for in the United States legal system primarily. There's there's more than two. Uh, well, let's let's just write them down real quick. Okay. So here's some things that we do that with. We do that with automobiles and other expensive vehicles, so jet skis and snowmobiles, that kind of thing. Uh, we do it with things like stocks and bonds. And we do it with real estate. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. Let's just build on that thought, that concept. So automobiles. Automobiles are different than most personal property because automobiles operate under a paper title system in the United States. So instead of Danny's coffee cup, if I jumped in his red Ford pickup truck 
and drove it to my house and Danny called Oakdale police and said Landon stole my pickup truck. And Oakdale police come to my house and they look at the VIN or they look at the license plate and they look that up and they say sure enough right here in our computer it shows that Danny is the owner of this red pickup truck. They're going to take his red pickup truck and they're going to handcuff me and take me to jail. Okay, Because we have a paper system, paper title system for automobiles. So even though I'm in possession, Danny's the owner. Okay, So that's a system based on paper title. And, and if you've ever bought or sold a car in, in a place like California, you know what that's like. You have to, there has to be a bill of sale and you go down to the DMV and you register and they give you a paper title and you pay taxes on that paper title. Right. So you can't sell automobiles or other expensive property like that without completing a written transfer. Okay, so we treat automobiles a little bit like we treat real estate. And you know, same thing for some stocks and bonds, other financial instruments. You, know, you get some kind of certificate proving that you're the owner, right? We do this especially with things like stocks and bonds because they're kind of ephemeral, they're non-physical, so you need a way of tracking the ownership, right? Possession's a little harder there because there's not a physical thing to actually possess. Possess, and then we do it with real estate. So there's something called the statute of frauds, uh, which is a was passed in England, and it basically said if you're going to buy or sell real property, real estate, there has to be a contract, a written contract to do that. That's what a deed is. It's a written contract to buy or sell real estate. And that statute of frauds was adopted in our common law here in the United States, and many states, like my own state, California, have actually made that part of what they call their civil code. So it's been adopted as what what's known as a statute. And I, I may do another video that just talks about the differences between statute and common law and administrative law, because that is important, but I don't want to get into it in this video. Okay, so by law, in California, real estate has to be transferred in writing. And with all things legal, there are exceptions to that rule, uh, but that's the, the basic rule. Okay, so we have primarily a paper title system for land in the United States, but now I'm going to give you an, an exception to the rule because there's an important exception to this rule for real estate. So under the Babylonian system and to some extent the Roman system, it is not crystal clear where, where the doctrine came from. It's probably from a mix. But under, the, under those systems, ancient legal systems, you could acquire ownership of property if you possessed it for long enough. Okay, so I believe, and I, pre, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments to the video, but I believe under the Roman system, if you possess somebody's personal property for a year and they didn't claim it, it became yours. And if you possess land for two years, so twice as long, um, and nobody disputed that possession for, t for two years, then the land became yours. And in the, under the Roman system, a person that was claiming ownership of property had the, had the burden of proof if they didn't have possession. So the burden of proof was on the, on the person that didn't have possession of the property being claimed. So if you had possession of the property, you had a stronger legal right. Okay, so possession was very important in the Roman system. And, and, there, and there's, a, there's a logical reason for that. Each of these systems, there's not one that's bad and one that's good necessarily. They each have their advantages and disadvantages. And one of the advantages of the system based on possession is people protect their property and uh, the land gets put to its best use because land doesn't lie vacant because somebody will come in and take it. Somebody will squat on it and take, and take it and put it, to, put it to good use. So there's some, some advantages and disadvantages to each of these systems. I'll do another video that talks about that kind of what some of the economic consequences are, are of, 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 these, of these two systems. But the system we have in the United States is a blend. So it's primarily for land, for real estate, it's primarily a paper title system, but there's an element of ownership through possession in our legal system for real property, and it, it's manifest in two primary ways. Okay. So I'm going to write down the two primary ways. One is what's called adverse possession. That's a legal legal concept or doctrine, and the other one is called prescriptive rights, okay, or prescriptive easements. That's another legal concept or doctrine. Okay. So adverse possession. It's also known as squatter's rights. That's when you acquire the actual 
underlying ownership of the dirt, the fee ownership, what we call fee, fee simple absolute. Okay, and a prescriptive easement is when you don't get the actual ownership, but you acquire a right to use somebody's land. Okay, those are those are prescriptive easements, and there's different legal requirements that you have to meet for these. One of them is the length of possession. Then there's you know the use has to be open, it has to be notorious, it has to be hostile. In most places in the United States, you have to pay taxes to get adverse possession. So there's a whole set of rules. Okay, but you can in the United States acquire property through unwritten, unwritten rights. In fact, that's one of the things that causes major problems in real estate, especially in urban areas, is problems with possession, not matching paper title. Okay, it's something we call, both of these things we call unwritten rights. So they're unwritten rights in land. In other words, they weren't created through writing like the statute of frauds requires, but they're still recognized by our legal system. And we'll hopefully do some more, we'll have some more conversations about why unwritten rights are important and how the surveyors deal with them and how the, how the title companies deal with it, okay? So that's the difference between a paper title system and a, an ownership based on possession, okay? Two very different things. We have a blend in the United States. We're gonna talk some more about paper title systems because that's very important here in the United States for real estate. It requires that you have some kind of registration system for your land transfers, a way to track ownership. And we're gonna talk about how Title companies do that. We're going to talk about grantor grantee indexes and title plants and lots of other fun stuff like that. Okay. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And I hopefully we'll see you on the third video for part one of our webinar series.